Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. How's it going, everybody? It's me, Big Mike, and welcome to Big Mike's Movie Reviews. Today is Thursday, June 29th, 2023. This is one of the final movie reviews I have for this month, and I've seen quite a few eclectic films over this past month, and even this half year that we're now in for 2023. It's been quite a wild ride so far. And speaking of a wild ride, just a few days ago, I saw this wild rom-com raunchy comedy called no Hard Feelings. This film was directed by Gene Stepnitsky, who recently directed the somewhat equally raunchy kids comedy called Good Boys. This film tells the story of Maddie, who was played by Academy Award winner Jennifer Lawrence, who is a now former Uber driver after her car gets towed, and she finds a way to get a new car by sleeping with this young introvert played by Andrew Barth Feldman. His character name is Percy. Now he has these helicopter parents, one of them played by the legendary Matthew Broderick, who vows that if she, Maddie, can get their son Percy out of his shell and even sleep with him, the car is all hers and she can get back to being an Uber driver and earning money to pay the foreclosure on the house that her mother left her. So, judging by the trailer, which, by the way, is linked below, as is any movie review I do. I may not always mention it, you guys, but if you ever see me talking about a movie and you don't know what it's about, or even if I forget to mention the trailer, it's always in the description. So, always have a look, just in case you're interested, if my words don't sway you. I digress. The way that the comedy looked in this trailer. It looked like one of those raunchy comedies you would have seen between like 2005, 2010. You know, stuff that basically came out in what I call like the Apatow block, where Judd Apatow had directed The 40-Year-Old Virgin in 2005, and then he did Knocked Up in 06, and then he produced a lot of stuff between that time frame, stuff like Pineapple Express, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, I Love You Man, and the list goes on. As well as other raunchy sex comedies, you know, like Good Luck Chuck with the washed up Dane Cook. Sorry. No, I'm just teasing. He's not such a bad guy. But I digress. You know, so this movie definitely felt kind of like with the time that we're living in with this admittedly, shall we say, stronger emphasis and attention to detail when it comes to human sexuality and sex as a joke and just jokes in general. Anyway, I don't know. Like, I was really not looking forward to this because I felt like it was either going to be all the way exploitive and trashy or it was going to be too preachy and too PC. To be honest, the film kind of falls in between the two. But the thing that saves this movie, and surprisingly, it has a lot of heart. And that is definitely because of the chemistry between... Andrew Barth Feldman, and Jennifer Lawrence. It feels right. A lot of the situations, they do have typical resolutions, and there's a lot of typical, I know I use that word quite a bit, typical things that happen in this sort of film that aren't very intelligent. Some things resolve themselves far too quickly. Some things are just really silly, but that's what you're there for. You're there to munch your popcorn and have a good time, but there's one other thing I'm sure quite a few of you will want to be there for. And much like last week when I saw Asteroid City and that featured some full frontal nudity in a PG-13 film, this very much R-rated film does feature full frontal nudity. And I guess might as well tell you who it is. It's a little too obvious. It is Jennifer Lawrence. So yes, those of you out there who are just dying to see what Jennifer Lawrence looks like, even though it's in the dark, what she looks like fully nude, completely, you know, frontal, you finally got what you asked for. Although the scene in question is not necessarily very sexy, it's 
far more on the comedic side. The rather raucous audience that I had when I saw this film was definitely pleased as they were constantly cheering all throughout the film. And in fact, I'll talk more about this discussion in another video about audience behavior, but let's just say for most of the runtime, I did have a pretty lousy, obnoxious audience who were definitely J-Law stands and wanted to see her goods. But even if you're not going there for that, I think what you will walk away with is a film that is definitely formulaic, definitely been there, seen that. But at the same time, it has a lot of good sensibilities. It doesn't end the way that most typical Hollywood movies end. It has some heart. It does have a decent dose of morals. But of course, it has one heaping pile of raunchy, trashy, exploitive slapstick. And I think that's okay. The film works on a lot of levels. You know, I, I was overall pleased with this. I walked in with, you know, really low expectations, and I walked out with a smile on my face. I found this film to be very entertaining. I do agree with what its current ratings are as of this recording. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has a positive 68%, and it has a 6.4 on IMDb. I think those are both totally justifiable for this film. So if you are a fan of Jennifer Lawrence, and you are a fan of kind of raunchy slapstick comedies, especially from the early 2000s, with a really big heart at the end of the day, I think No Hard Feelings is going to be just right for you. I did overall enjoy this film, and with that being said, I'm now going to assign my grade. I'm going to go ahead and give No Hard Feelings a solid B. It doesn't deserve an A, it doesn't deserve a C, but it gets a B because B means good. And that's exactly what this film was. It was good enough more than anything else. And I didn't regret seeing it. So thank you guys so much for watching my review of No Hard Feelings. It's in theaters right now. Go check it out. And be sure to check back later on tonight for my review of the brand new Indiana Jones film called The Dial of Destiny. I'm actually going to be on my way right now to go see it. I'll be doing my review right outside of the AMC Rolling Hills 20. And you guys will get to see my thoughts firsthand before its wide release tomorrow on Friday, June 30th. And also on Friday, June 30th, I will be going to see the classic Independence Day, the one from 1996. I hadn't seen it in theaters since July 4th, 1996. And of course, I already do have a review for that on my channel, so I'm not necessarily going to make a review for it at all. I'll definitely you know, give some thoughts about that a little bit later on down the road. But for what it's worth, I'm really excited to see this in theaters on 35 millimeter once again, the way it's meant to be seen. So thank you guys so much for watching my review today completely of No Hard Feelings. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Of course, help support my channel, help it grow even more. I appreciate you guys. You guys be well, enjoy your movies, and I'll see you there. Bye now. Oh,